Ahoy there, mateys. Are ye ready for a joke? Aye, aye. Shiver me timbers. What is a pirate's favorite food? I don't know. What? Barbecue. <laughs> now, what kind of fish do pirates keep as pets? I don't know. What? Swordfish. <laughs> Arr, this last joke be a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Who's there? A pirate trying to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Take a look. Oh, so hungry. Bread. All right. Plop. What's next? Spread the peanut butter. Hmm. Peanut butter. Sword. Here we go. Whoop. That was easy. Spread jelly. Hmm. Jelly fish. Grape jelly. Jelly fish. Grape jelly. Jellyfish? Mm. Jellyfish! Mm. Um. What is the Bible? The Bible is one book made up of 66 little books full of chapters and verses. Inside those books are stories, songs, poems, and dreams, and together, they tell one big story, God's story. The Bible is the most treasured book full of God's words that tell the true story of his amazing love. From the beginning of time, God spoke the world into existence, creating everything that we see. God continued to speak through a family that he chose to show his love to the world. He spoke through the stories of the kings and told what was to come through prophets. When God's people rejected him, they were taken into exile, and God stopped speaking to them for hundreds of years. That's where the Old Testament part of the Bible ends. The New Testament begins with God sending his son Jesus to earth to fix our friendship with him once and for all. In the Gospels is where we can read the good news of how Jesus' life, death, and resurrection changed everything. He made a way for us to be friends with God. Followers of Jesus started the church, which is how the good news of Jesus it spread all over the world. And at the end, God's story tells us about a future where Jesus will come back and make the world right again which is really a brand new beginning. When you look at everything that happened in the Bible, you will see that it is the story God wrote to show you how much he loves you.
play this or that. Listen out for a question. If ye think the answer is on this side of the screen, wave your arms this way. And if ye think the answer is on that side of the screen, wave your arms that way. Ready? Here we go. Question one. Did pirates think that earrings would help them hear better or see better? Pirates thought earrings would help them see better. Question two. What did pirates do for fun? Play board games or go fishing? They played board games. Question three. What were pirates famous for creating? Quilts or songs? Pirates created songs called sea shanties. Question four. Who did God tell to write his words in the Bible? Angels or people? People! Question five. Who is the good news of the Bible all about? Jesus or Blackbeard? The good news of the Bible is all about Jesus. Have you ever gotten good news? Maybe you found out that your cousins are coming to visit or that you won the art contest at school. Everybody likes good news, and that's why God made it such a big part of his story. The Bible uses a really cool word for good news. It's the word gospel. You may have heard someone say, that's gospel. But what does that word really mean? It means good news. But in the Bible, it's not just the good news that you aced the test or that your favorite team made it to the playoffs. It's even better than the best news that you can imagine. In fact, the first four books of the New Testament part of the Bible are called the Gospels because they tell the good news of when God sent his son Jesus into the world to save us. This was good news because Jesus was going to take the punishment for all the wrong things we do and fix everyone's friendships with God so that we can live forever with him in heaven one day. The guys who wrote the good news we read in the Gospels are named Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And they all tell the true stories of Jesus' life here on earth. Some of them saw what Jesus did with their own eyes, and some wrote down what other people saw him do. One of those guys named John even called Jesus the Word because he knew that Jesus was God's message to the whole world, letting everyone know how much he loves them and wants to have a friendship with them. But you know, Jesus didn't just come to earth to die on the cross and come back to life so that we could be saved. He also came to help us know the best way to live each and every day. When Jesus came to earth as a person, God's people were trying to follow a bunch of rules, 613 rules in fact. And Jesus helped them out by saying that all of those rules can be summed up into just two, love God and love others. That's so helpful. And when Jesus prayed, he was showing us that we can talk to our heavenly father just like he did. When he listened to others, he was helping us see that we should do that too. And Jesus even did miracles and helped others so that we would believe he is all powerful and can do anything that we need. But Jesus helped us out big time by showing us what to do when evil comes our way. You see, the devil tempted Jesus to do wrong things several times. He tried to get Jesus to jump off of a rooftop, turn rocks into bread, and even bow down to him. But each time Jesus used God's word to remind the devil of the truth and stand strong against his evil schemes. Like when the devil said that the angels would catch Jesus if he jumped off the roof, Jesus said, the scriptures say, you must not test the Lord your God. And when the devil tried to get Jesus to bow down to him, Jesus told him to go away because the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God, serve only him. Jesus knew what God's word said and it helped him do the right thing. And God's word will help us too. When we read God's story, we'll see that it is so helpful for our lives. God didn't want us to have to guess how we were supposed to live. He loved us and wanted to help us know the best way. So he gave us the Bible, his story. And when we read it, it can help us each day. Ah, God's word helps me. God's word helps me. Repeat after me in your best parrot voice. Ah, God's word helps me. Ah, everyone, get on your feet and sing along. Let's 
learn the books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job and Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's word. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. You did it! That's the Old Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's word. You guys are doing great, but let's speed it up for the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's word. Let's keep going, everybody. Hebrews and James. Hebrews, James, first and second Peter, first, second, third John, Jude and Revelation. Oh yeah, we did it. That's the New Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's word. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible because we love God's word. Because we love God's word. Follow the treasure. Now where's the treasure? Are you serious? There's some pretty amazing things in the Bible. See if you can figure out which of these actually happened. A. There was a forest of rainbow-colored trees that's still here today. B. People found money inside a fish's mouth. Or C. Orange snow fell from the sky. It was B. In a book of the Bible called Matthew, we can read about the time when Jesus helped his friend Peter by telling him, Go cast a line into the lake and pull out the first fish you hook. Open its mouth and you will find a coin. And sure enough, the first fish that Peter caught had a coin in its mouth. Seriously, that really happened. You can read it for yourself in Matthew chapter 17. Pretty amazing, right? Ahoy! Let's learn a verse from God's Word. Psalm 119, 140 tells us why the Bible is such a good gift from God to His people. Let's see if you can learn it by filling in the blanks. Shout out the word you think is missing. Your to me. Your word. You got it. <laughs> Let's do another one. Your word to me, your servant, is like pure <laughs> gold. That's it. Just one more. I what you <laughs> I treasure what you say. <laughs> <laughs> we'll shiver me timbers! You got it! Let's say it all together now! Your word to me, your servant, is like pure gold! I treasure what you say! <laughs> you can find that treasure in Psalm 119, 140! Nice work, mateys! Ah, nice work! All right, me crew, get up and dance like a pirate.
When you read your Bible, there are three questions you can ask. The first question is what? What did we read in God's word today? Did we read about A, a pirate who couldn't find his hook hand? B, God's son Jesus? Or C, a prophet named Jeremiah? The answer is B. We read about how God sent his son Jesus to not only fix our friendship with him, but to help us know the best way to live. The next question to ask when you read the Bible is so what? Or in other words, why does this matter to me? Well, let me ask you this. Do you ever need help knowing what to do? Yes, we all need help. And that is why God's story about Jesus matters. It shows you how much God loves you and it reminds you that you need Jesus to fix your friendship with God. And it helps you know the best way to handle different things that come your way. The Bible is so helpful. And the last question to ask yourself is now what? Now what do we do with what we've learned? Well, the best way to let the Bible help us is by reading it every day. Don't know what to do when your brother is driving you crazy? Read the Bible. Wondering if you should return the money you took from your mom's wallet? Read the Bible. Need some tips on how to help two friends who are fighting? Read the Bible. And whenever you read the Bible, remember to ask yourself, what, so what, and now what? Ahoy, mateys! Bow your heads, close your eyes, and pray with me. Father God, thank you for giving us your word and helping us know the best way to live. And thank you for showing us that we need Jesus to fix our friendship with you. You are the best helper, and we love you. Amen. In case you missed it, here's what you need to know. God's word helps me. Yeah!